Welcome to Season 4 of E-Commerce Fastlane. This podcast helps resilient entrepreneurs thrive with Shopify. And now, on to Episode 135. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. Today's episode is brought to you by OmniSend. If you're in e-commerce marketing and it feels like those weekly newsletters are no longer enough to power your growth, you're gonna love OmniSend. With more than 3,000 five-star reviews, OmniSend is the go-to choice for nimble Shopify merchants who want to step up from regular email campaigns so you can actually start increasing your sales, not your workload. With OmniSend, you'll be launching pre-built e-commerce automation in no time as well as intuitively segmenting customers based on their shopping behavior and even trying out SMS or push notifications, all from the same platform. The best part? OmniSend provides an immediate boost to your revenue while staying as easy as drag and drop email building, with automated emails averaging up to 40% of the total email revenue. Join Duke Cannon, Black Halo, and other high-growth Shopify brands that choose OmniSend to grow their e-commerce business on autopilot. So visit OmniSend.com and start your 14-day free trial today with no credit card required. Well, hey there, it's Steve, and welcome back to the e-commerce Fastlane podcast. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show where we have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. New episodes are available twice weekly with your favorite podcast players like Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and many more. You can also stream current episodes, including a very relevant back catalog. So if you're looking to grow and scale, check out some of the back catalog. You can go directly to ecommercefastlane.com. Now on today's episode, uh, my guest is David Sobey, who is the co-founder and CEO from a company called Happy Returns. Now, Happy Returns is a returns software and, I'll add, a reverse logistics company that is tackling the painful challenge of returning products that have been purchased online. Its mission really is to make returns beautiful for shoppers, the retailers, that's us, and the planet. So it really is a great conversation. There's a ton of learnings. Please make sure you also listen to the end of the episode because there is an amazing, exclusive kind of listener-only bonus that uh, many people listening today could take this offer up on. So so hi, David. Welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate you having me. Oh, my pleasure. So I mentioned a little bit at the top of the show here, but on a high level, what does Happy Returns do and what sort of problems are you aiming to solve for Shopify store owners and brands? Yeah, so as you described in the mission, um, and as folks can probably guess from our name, we're tackling the challenge of returning products purchased online. When we talk about beautiful returns and making them beautiful for shoppers, retailers, and the planet, you know, a beautiful return actually means something slightly different for each one of those stakeholders. So for shoppers, a beautiful return is one that's friction-free, meaning specifically it doesn't involve printing labels or packing up boxes or taping boxes or really important for shoppers, you know, a beautiful return doesn't involve waiting for the item to go back through the mail to receive a refund or have an exchange order triggered. For Shopify uh, store owners, a beautiful return is one that doesn't happen. It's a refund that gets converted into an exchange, but refund or exchange, the item still has to get back from the shopper to the merchant. And so a beautiful return is one that's low cost because in today's environment, shoppers really expect returns to be free. As you and I know, free, someone has to pay for it. So free really means subsidized by the merchant. And so the lowest cost return is a beautiful one. And then for the planet, a beautiful return is one that eliminates cardboard. It's one that eliminates greenhouse gases because the reverse logistics are efficient. And so, you know, happy returns being beautiful for the planet is really about sustainable returns. I love this mission. So let's talk about the journey. It's, it's always fascinating to me, and I mention every episode, but like why people choose 
to build what they build. It's so interesting to me, the problems that people are solving. From your perspective, being a, you know, a co-founder of this brand, like what do you believe uniquely positions you and your co-founder on a couple points? Number one, to have the desire to want to tackle this problem. And number two, to have the expertise to even create this platform. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, how do you get into the least sexiest part of e-commerce, right? <laughs> so the story, and I'll, I'll keep it brief, but my co-founder is Mark Geller. Mark and I met a decade ago. We were working at a flash sale retailer here in Los Angeles called Hotlook. And if you know the Hotlook story, we ended up getting acquired by Nordstrom. I was leading the marketing team at the time. Mark was in charge of the mobile team. And one of the programs that we worked on together after the acquisition was letting Hotlook shoppers buy online because we were an online-only business, and return products to Nordstrom Rack stores. And the insights that we gained building that program, it's still in, in use today, it's called the Return to Rack program. You know, the insights we gained building that are what led to founding the company. And in simple terms, it was, if you give online shoppers the choice, you know, return via mail or return in person to a store, they overwhelmingly prefer to return in person to eliminate the hassle and weight of returns by mail. And then Nordstrom Rack in the equation loved the program because we were driving shoppers that had bought online into the rack, became a great source for new customer acquisition. I had left the company, Mark and I were having lunch because you know, we were just friends and he was telling me about the success of the program. And you know, he said, hey, we're going to drive 2 million visits into Nordstrom Rack stores and customers love returning this way. And they actually will choose to buy on Hotlook rather than some of our competitors because of this program. And that was really the light bulb moment for us is we thought, wow, you know, who knew, right? <laughs> who knew that this was such a, a friction point? And when we went out to raise money, you know, for the business initially, we said, we're just going to replicate this case study. You know, we're going to build buy online, return to store for retailers without stores, recognizing that, you know, there are going to be a lot more Hotlooks in the world, you know, meaning, you know, digital natives or folks that don't have a store network and they don't have the luxury of a parent company like Nordstrom. And so that was really the mission when we started. Kind of fast forward to today, the surface area that we're tackling has expanded. As you characterized it at the beginning, it's re return software and reverse logistics. We sometimes describe it as the operating system for e-commerce returns. And it's those two things working together that are really required to solve the problem. Yeah, and that's why I want to have you on today because it is very, very unique. I think there's some interesting competitors in this space that, you know, that assist even Shopify has made the odd acquisition here or there, trying to figure out returns management. And when I had the pre-interview with you and I, I learned more, I'm here I am front lines in e-commerce managing, you know, $100 million brands, many of them. They have lots of returns, lots of exchanges and trying to think about their customer experience and the post-purchase experience of returns and exchanges. It's on a lot of people's minds when I heard about happy returns and how unique you're positioning it and the partnerships and the alignment you're having, it truly is beautiful the way you're doing it. And it's so unique. And so I'm glad to dig into uh, this podcast to make sure people understand why you should not be bundled in together with others in what appears to be returns management solution. It's not just that. So please listen in for more information about your solution. And so, like you mentioned about a hot look, um, you've also done a little sneaking around. I understand you're also the former chief marketing officer at Revolve. I mean, you know, other notable kind of positions, uh, I believe, in fashion and apparel. So you kind of get it. You could get the, you know, the sizing issues and color and just people just aren't happy. But they do like the brand that they, that they shop with. Just this particular purchase didn't work for them. And so do you believe that maybe some of these experiences that you've, you know, had over these years, uh, do you believe that's helping you form and I guess and even build uh, the Happy Returns platform? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea kind of came from Hotlook. As you mentioned, I went on to be the CMO at Revolve. If folks know Revolve, it's a, a large, you know, billion dollar plus market cap public company here now in, in Los Angeles that sells apparel, footwear, beauty, et cetera, online, really high return rates. And I think what was unique about Revolve and probably similar to sort of the ethos at Nordstrom was an acknowledgement early on that returns are just going to be part of the business. People are shopping online especially in, in the categories I mentioned, you know, apparel or footwear, sizing is really important. You know, oftentimes shoppers, you know, could be someone, you know, buying a dress for an event. It may be that she wants to buy several and try them on at home and pick the one that, that fits best, uh, the one that looks best. And, and so a lot of times, especially in the categories that we work in, a lot of e-commerce purchases have returns sort of built into them. You know, there's a, an industry term that's that's come up called bracketing, which which means like buying multiple sizes of something and especially in footwear, this is pretty common. And so, you know, seeing how 
much Revolve leaned into returns and said, we're going to make this as easy as we can. And seeing the loyalty that that can bring, you know, that was a, another data point along the way that said, man, this is a problem that, you know, not only does it need to be solved, but when you solve it, you can really create, you know, loyalty in your customers. You can, you can retain more of them. You can create higher lifetime values if you, if you make it easy for people. Which kind of leads me to my next question, because I feel what happens is, is that a lot of brands think about the return exchange process as, as, as more of a cost center. And they don't think about the long term value of creating raving fans. You know, if it's not necessarily no today, it may be on this size or no altogether, but it's not no forever. And most brands, typically what they're doing in the early stages, they have a, a link somewhere um, and they want you to email customer service and they start asking lots of questions. It appears like a lot of human capital, a lot of waste time versus maybe a self-serve portal type model. And so I guess that's my question is, is that why do you believe a self-serve return or exchange solution in this case, why do you believe it's important for a growing Shopify brand? Let me maybe explain the component parts of the e-commerce return operating system. I think that'll, that'll explain or answer your question. So, you know, what you're referring to in automating returns is really the, what we call portal software. And so that's step one, which is um, software that, you know, in our case, a, a Shopify merchant could find our app in the app store, download the app, attach it to their store, spend five minutes configuring the app. So this would be things like adding specifics of return policy, um, adding branding, and then be able to launch a branded return portal, which is sort of self-service for the shoppers to automate, you know, the return and exchange process. So this is, again, branded for the merchant. It removes customer service from the equation, right? Shoppers can sort of self-provision their returns. Typically, they start by authenticating themselves, usually using an order number and a zip code. They can also do this via email. And, and so what our software does is it pulls up all the orders in that, that customer's profile, applies the merchant's return policy, and lets the shopper identify the items that they want to return. Based on the information they give us, you know, why are you returning this item? And based on the available inventory, our software will actually make exchange recommendations. The simple example I, I always give is, hey, I'm returning a pair of Rothy's. Um, that's a customer of ours. You know, they're size seven, they're black flats, they were too small. Well, our software will go look for that same style. And if it's available in an eight, we'll promote it to the, to the shopper as one of the options to exchange. And just that simple process of sort of, of making it easy for people to say yes actually has a positive impact on the exchange rate. And the higher the exchange rate, the more revenue the, the merchant can actually retain. So that's the, the second function of our software. And then the third, and I think this is really where we're different from the competitive set and you know, central to our thesis is that at the end of our flow, we give customers choices. So yes, you can return by mail if you want to print a label, our software will render the label. But, but more often what shoppers want to do is they want to drop off in person. And so what happens then is they get a QR code, they get directions to the nearest Happy Returns return bar location. Um, this is a network of 2,600 places around the country that we manage in order to accept returns from all the merchants we work with. And we share the nearest location based on the zip code where the order was shipped. So again, most shoppers will opt into box-free drop-off. This is sort of similar to if you've bought anything on Amazon recently, you can typically return an Amazon purchase to Kohl's or to Whole Foods. So in this example, you get the QR code, you're returning it to Happy Returns. And in the 2,600 locations are um, in all kinds of different retail establishments, so places like Paper Source, or Cost Plus World Market, or Bed Bath and Beyond, or we have a partnership with Simon Malls, we're with the Mall Concierge. We recently, end of last year, announced a partnership with FedEx Office, and so you know, 2,600 locations around the country where you can take that QR code. You don't need to print anything. You don't need to box anything. You don't need to wrestle with packing tape. We joke that tape is a four-letter word. <laughs> You know, you simply show up with your item and your QR code and say, hey, I'm here to do a happy return. From a shopper perspective, you know, they love the friction-free element. They love not having to wait because when, when the item gets checked in at the drop-off location, that's what triggers the refund or that's what triggers the exchange order from the merchant. Let's talk about maybe what's broken because I totally agree with you. That is like a, a fabulous workflow to have automating things through the portal and then allowing uh, and some recommendations in there about how would you like to exchange it or refund it and then label versus in-store obviously going to a location and dropping it off and that triggers an event and, and so I'll, we'll, we'll dig into some specific things about how these returns actually migrate their way back to the appropriate vendor. What do you believe is broken right now in the post-purchase returns workflow? 
That's a great question. So uh, for shoppers, it's really the friction, right? No one wants to print anything. I saw a great uh, tweet the other day that said, you know, anyone under the age of 35, like stop expecting us to print things. And in a COVID world where people are working from home, you know, for a lot of folks, the printer was at the office. And now if you're working from home, if the merchant and the return provider is asking you to print a label, that's a hard thing to overcome. On the shopper side, it's, you know, it's the printing, it's the boxing, the taping. Very importantly, it's the waiting to get your money back. And so we, we solve that. On the merchant side, and I think this is probably most relevant for you know listeners today, it's really about the cost. Refund or exchange the item has to get back. Today's environment, shoppers expect the merchant to subsidize this. They expect it to be free. And, and so this is where the reverse logistics side of what we do uh, kicks in. So to continue with that Rothy's example, Rothy's customer drops the item off at a, at a return bar. Uh, that pair of Rothy's gets put into a reusable tote. That reusable tote fills up during the course of the day with returns from other merchants. So it could be a dress from Revolve, it could be a sweater from Draper James, it could be a pair of board shorts from Outer Known. They all go into the same reusable tote because every merchant is now getting the benefit of aggregation. It's far cheaper to ship one 20-pound box full of returns than it is to ship 21-pound boxes. That commingled aggregation is critical to driving down the cost for the merchants. So that tote will ship from the drop-off point to one of our regional processing hubs. We, we operate two of these today, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. And at that hub, we will sort by merchant. So all the Rothy shoes get segregated from all the Steve Madden shoes, then you know, from the, the dresses from Draper James, and then we'll bulk ship the items back to the merchant. This is, again, taking advantage of aggregation in order to drive down the shipping cost per unit. And so there's you know real hard cost savings. To, typically, it's in the neighborhood of 20 to 30% versus paying for returns by mail. This is the part that I really wanted to make sure that people listening today, this is a big differentiator in the marketplace right now because there are a lot of interesting solutions out there. You know, I don't even want to call them competitors, but it's interesting where they really have a software portal solution, mostly label printing options, maybe attempting to create a gift card, maybe in exchange to remotivate people to want to purchase. But at the end of the day, the product still has to get back to the merchant somehow. And you're right, people don't want to print labels. It's quite a hassle and it is the friction. And you're suggesting because of these 2,600 locations, you're giving people the opportunity, not to mention the residual effect of these locations. I mean, a lot of times I wouldn't be surprised if people start shopping or learn more about these return locations and they become customers at the return locations in exchange for being a happy returns drop-off center. You got it. On that side of our business, you know, that is the model. So and I'll just use paper source because they're a longstanding location partner of ours. You know, if you if you bring your Rothy's into a paper source store, you as the shopper, you get the benefit of that, you know, friction-free return, you know, getting your refund or your exchange initiated there on the spot. Happy Return sends you an email that memorializes the return transaction. And it, this is important. It's not like when you go to the post office and you get that 16-digit alphanumeric code. Um, you know, it's like, oh, you shipped something. This is an itemized receipt that says, okay, you know, David, you're returning the sweater, you know, you're returning the medium, exchanging it for a large, you're returning the pants, you know, you're getting a refund on the pants. So there's $100 coming back to your, you know, Visa card ending in 1234. So it's a, a detailed itemized receipt. But that receipt also, we provide an opportunity for the location partner to make an offer. So if you were to turn Rothy's into a paper source, what you would probably find is a, I think today there's a $10 offer that they're running to buy something in the store that day. And so again, you know, we're trying to, the company's called Happy Returns, right? We're trying to create joy and delight in, in what used to be the worst part of shopping online. And shoppers love this, right? They love the fact that, gosh, this was, not only was it a friction-free return, but now I'm in a place like a paper source. I have an offer from the store. And what often happens is, is that people buy things, right? I mean, they, they're like, oh, well, as long as I'm here, I'm going to get that card for the birthday party that I have coming up, or I'm going to buy, you know, a craft kit for, you know, this, you know, Easter's coming. I'm going to buy a, a, an egg coloring kit. It's really trying to bring joy to what you know, used to be, like I said, the worst part of shopping online. Yeah. It sounds like an IRL, like an in real life kind of post-purchase kind of cross sell, <laughs> you know? What about internationalization? Obviously you're, you know, well entrenched and I believe you're expanding uh, to more and more locations as, as more uh, traditional retailers, you know, realize there's an opportunity here of the cross sell opportunity, but then, and then being a happy returns kind of certified drop-off location. 
How are you handling potential expansion of the brand? Maybe let's start off in Canada, being a little more closer to home. And then what what are the plans in the future from an internationalization perspective? Yeah, our international expansion is sort of piggybacked off of what's available in Shopify. So for example, the software component of what we do, the the portal software can be internationalized. You know, all all the currencies that are supported uh, by Shopify. Later this year, we're introducing local language. So, you know, a shopper in... France could actually uh, review the, the retailer's return portal in you know native French. But today, everything we do internationally involves printing a label and shipping back where we're headed and what's on our roadmap, uh, end of 21, beginning of, of 22, is actual in-country return bars. So the same infrastructure that we built here, you know, the, the drop-off locations supported by the processing hubs, that's what we're tackling next. Um, Canada is actually our first market. That's part of the plan. And it, you know, same idea of can we connect the return portal and the work the shopper does to initiate the return online with the physical drop off by having you know presence in in locations. Yeah, and there's a lot of like you know uh, significant retailers all around in Canada that maybe are Canadian specific. Um, so it's interesting to see hopefully that those kind of negotiations are open now. And it's nice you've uh, you've set a precedent too. Obviously, with 2,600 locations and FedEx and other locations that you know have made the choice to use you. So you have a case study. It's going to probably make the incentive or the offer easier when you start uh, communicating with uh, the powers to be in Canada and the retail locations that are close to Canadian consumers. Exactly. And and that's the idea is that we can, you know, what we have sort of built over the past five and a half years here, every one of those relationships to get to the network we have, you know, our hope when we enter Canada is that we'll be able to, to strike one partnership and have, you know, a network that can serve the whole population and use what we've done in the U.S. as a case study. So that's the exact idea. So David, this show has a, diver- I'm sure you know this, but it has a very diverse range of entrepreneurs that listen each week. I mean, we're up to almost 10,000 downloads or so. And from your vantage point, like what sort of advice would you give brands today, store owners today? These brands are really eager to grow and scale. I know scale is something different maybe than the growth part of a business, but I'm just curious from your perspective, because you see a lot of success. I mean, you you know, even going to the app store, I see like, you know, Mac Weldon and Andy Swimwear and Rothy's Untuck It, Draper James. I mean, there's a whole bunch of like pretty signature Shopify plus brands that see value in your solution. I'm just curious, knowing these partners and other, you know, brands on other platforms, it's interesting to me, what do you see that that makes a lot of these brands overall successful? Yeah, I think, um, you know, at the highest level, I, I would describe it as a focus on core competence and a willingness to work with enabling technologies in areas that aren't core. So I think about like Shopify's success, for example, you know, the willingness of, of these brands to rely on Shopify as the e-commerce platform. I think with regard to our domain, you know, returns and exchanges, I think it's a willingness to rely on a company like Happy Returns to provide this thing, which let's face it, you know, returns and reverse logistics is not core to most, <laughs> most merchants. You know, what, what's core are things like a great product, a great assortment, a phenomenal brand that has an emotional connection the shopper experience and the way that they actually interact with the brand, right? For the folks that we've worked with and, and you know, we've, we've started with some of these when they've been small and then watched them scale, I think it's really a focus on the things that are unique and a willingness to partner on the things that aren't core. You know, reverse logistics is messy. It's hard. We've probably spent more time thinking about this problem than anyone in the world at this point, you know, been at it for five and a half years. And so I think a willingness to say, hey, I want partners that can allow me to stay focused on the things that I know are going to drive long-term value in my business, which really ends up being product and customer experience and a willingness to work with partners uh, for the things that aren't. And I think you can see this, you know, it's it's not just happy returns, but you know, you see this in payment options, you see this in, in sort of marketing toolkits. There are a lot of other examples of businesses in the Shopify ecosystem that are, you know, have, have figured out one p- part of the journey and Merchants that are scaling are are trying to identify those best in class technologies and saying, in a way, it's it's freeing. It's like I don't want to have to worry about this or be an expert in this because I have the right partner. I'm finding them in the Shopify ecosystem. I'm just going to be able to focus on the things which are unique and make me great as a company. 
I think it's part of that whole kind of plus uh, technology partnership kind of group. There's, you know, plus certified app partners. Um, it's so interesting when, you know, SaaS companies like yourself go down that journey and learn more about, well, what does it take to become a certified plus technology partner? Because, you know, Shopify, you know, I always say this a lot on the show, but, you know, we do commerce, 80% of commerce very well. It's typically that last 20% that needs to be filled in with, you know, a partner connection or a very specific marketing app or a BI tool, or in your case, you know, a proper reverse logistics kind of return process. This is this is all part of the overall customer experience. This is not maybe a native solution in Shopify, obviously. And so it's nice that that these kind of pieces can all come together. I think that's the reasons why the Shopify ecosystem is such a flourishing and very open and communicative kind of an environment. People are just there to share and help other brands. It's just all about entrepreneurship. And I think that's really exciting. Yeah, I have to say it's inspiring to sort of see how enabling that ecosystem is and it creates entrepreneurs and it lets entrepreneurs follow their passions. And as you described, like let an ecosystem help you grow rather than having to worry about becoming an expert in every component of selling online to to sort of say like this ecosystem provides me with, you know, a best in class set of technologies and experiences and supporting services so that I can focus as the entrepreneur on my passion. And man, it, it's really fun to work with brands that we have discovered, you know, either through the app store or just, you know, as, as members of the community and, and watch them grow. I mean, it's so inspiring. So what does the future look like for Happy Returns? Are you able to share maybe a, a North Star for 21 and beyond? I'm always curious about, you know, like partner alignment. I know we're expanding eventually into Canada end of this year or, or into 22. But just end of the day, I just would like to understand how you're going to continue just to offer value to brands and just, I guess, almost surprise and delight customers with your platform. The simple way to think about us is that we've got retailers, you know, so the stores that work with us, we have the drop-off locations. And so- you know, a big part of, of our plans are more of both of those, right? More locations for people to drop returns off, you know, serving more stores. I think the, the most interesting, and, and beyond international, which is, you know, a big part of the focus, probably one of the more interesting initiatives that we have is, you know, everything we've done to date has been for, focused on reverse logistics, getting the items back from the, the customers to the merchants or the merchants 3PL, you know, third-party logistics partner. Where we're headed is, and I'll just pick on Rothy's as an example, all of Rothy's returns are passing back through Happy Returns hub facilities. So 2,600 drop-off points are sort of the spokes. And then we have these two regional hubs where you know, the, the commingled aggregated shipments go. And then, of course, we sort all the Rothy's out from the other returns. We can actually handle the goods at those locations. We can actually disposition them. We can identify the ones that need refurbishment versus the ones that can be sold again. We can actually do the, the packaging. So you know the, the process to get a pair of Rothy's, as an example, ready to be resold like new, you know, we can evaluate the condition, do the refurbishment, repack them in a new box and new, new materials, et cetera. Where we're headed in 21 is actually starting to drop ship those items to the next customer. So this doesn't exist today, but you can imagine if you're a Shopify merchant, maybe you have one warehouse or one third-party logistics partner where your inventory is held. Working with Happier Turns, the items that we're handling through our hubs could become new nodes in your fulfillment network. You could go from having you know, one warehouse, say, in the middle of the country to now three, you know, inventory in three warehouses. In the case of Happier Turns, it's the, the returned inventory passing back. If we're holding something and we're able to process it and prepare it to be resold like new, why can't we just drop ship it to the customer if there's an order for it in that region of the country? To me, that this is really exciting because at the end of the day, I think we're all sort of competing against the expectations that Amazon is setting. And Amazon has set a a pretty clear expectation for for shoppers that items uh, get delivered fast. I mean, the way they do that is not by shipping things really fast. It's by having inventory all over the country. And it's really hard to compete with that if you're a small brand. And maybe you you don't have the capital to invest in having lots of inventory everywhere. Your returns can start to become part of that solution. And and I think we're a company probably uniquely positioned to, to start delivering on this idea of use your returns as part of your fulfillment rather than just this cost center, you know, you're trying to get these items back. But, you know, if we're holding something and it's it's ready to be resold as new and there's demand for it in part of the country, you know, why don't we just drop ship it to the next customer? So that was a long-winded explanation. I hope it made sense. Yeah, it definitely resonates with me because I, I was managing a brand uh, a year or so ago, LA fashion brand. 
Uh, so they have three or four locations kind of in the greater LA market um, in a very busy online store in their own branded apparel. And what's interesting is when I went for a tour, when I went to their location, I was absolutely shocked at the size of the room they had just for returns. Like they're so large and so busy that they had, you know, 40 foot trailers backed up. Some weren't unloaded yet with the returns and then, you know, four or five 40 foot trailer loads, like just for the days outbound. And so it was a pretty significant operation of kind of what they were doing. I could tell from the owner's conversations I've had with him is that it is a real massive pain managing returns. It's a necessary part of the business. He said like refurbishing and repackaging and there's, you know, now there's COVID things and there's, there's lots of craziness and, and then, you know, some people wear things uh, one time only and ship it back. And how do you, you know, note that in the customer record somehow in Shopify that maybe this is a habitual returner. There's lots of things to think about. And I know that particular part of his business was very stressful for him. And I saw the amount of people that are in that area from steamers to different things. And this is their own product. You're suggesting that maybe at some point in the future, Happy Returns will be able to, you know, maybe handle some of the Rothy's returns, exchanges, and, and then actually like reship the product refurbished and perfect in the Rothy standard because it came back perfect. I'm looking at it from the brand's perspective where they are themselves the warehouse and they are accepting their returns back. It sounds like a solution like yours might be more interesting for them because it alleviates, I guess, some of the workload on the human capital of having to manage a full returns department, but then somehow thinking about the sink of if it's in a returns location owned and managed buy happy returns it's the real-time sync back to shopify as part of their 3pl or how they can push the order out knowing the inventory is now increased because we've just fixed one product or repackaged it i'm sure you're thinking about these sort of things but this is what's been on my mind recently too trying to come up with a more efficient movement of goods trying to think about you know fewer touches trying to think about it all through the lens of customer experience and, and sort of speed of delivery. And you know, logistics is a set of nodes in a network. And how can we use those nodes more efficiently is, is the, the big idea that we're trying to solve. Love it. So how can people learn more about Happy Returns? Great question. So obviously there's our website, which is happyreturns.com. There's a resources section of our website that has lots of great case studies, including some of the brands that we mentioned today. So there's a great case study about Draper James. There's one about Rothy's. There's one about Cuts Clothing, which is a brand we work with. There's all kinds of good customer testimonials and customer stories that hopefully for, for listeners, they may be able to find a brand, a store that sort of is similar to their business and hear about the experience that those folks are having. I would direct folks to the resources page of our website to learn more. Obviously, there's a solution section that details information about the return portal, about the return bar uh, network, that you know, this is the drop-off network and about reverse logistics, but that's a really good place to start. And there's a Shopify uh, app. Uh, you can go to the app store and just type in happy returns. Um, you can locate that and install that. And that's interesting. Could I just give a quick pitch for that? So we, we spent a lot of time working on uh, the presentation, a lot of time working on our video. So <laughs> would love uh, you know, to, for folks to watch the video that's attached to our, our listing in the app store. Um, I think it does a really good job in, you know, less than two minutes explaining kind of what we do and how it works and the controls that we, that we provide to merchants to really make it their own, to be able to customize, as you know, they talked about earlier, the branding, the policy, et cetera. There's a fair amount of complexity in this process that we've really made simple. It is easy to get started. And I think, you know, the listing and the video and the Shopify app marketplace are a great place to, to kind of be introduced. I will add that I'm going to put that exact same video because it's on YouTube. I'm going to put it uh, in your show notes also, but people are going to download the app anyway. So please watch the video um, I think in the app store or on the show notes for this particular episode because it will definitely be there. I love animated video and I'll tell you, it's a lot harder than it seems to get a complex idea into a, an, an animated video. Um, so I'm really proud of what we, we produced for the app store. Um, we also chatted offline before recording today and I understand that you would like to share an offer for the e-commerce Fastlane listeners. Yeah, so as I described, there's you know component parts of our offering. Uh, the portal software is a component part. And so for anyone that uh, wants to try it for free, we're going to offer two months of free return portal software. So this is the, the app that you can download from the App Store. The best way to, to go about that would be if you're talking to a Happy Returns uh, salesperson, you can just reference the Fastlane podcast, or you could go to happyreturns.com forward slash Fastlane. And we've got a landing page set up for anyone that wants to register. 
And you know, by by registering there, someone from our sales team will contact you, and and we'll know to apply the two months of free、uh, return portal software、uh, to anyone that signs up there. Yeah, and it's a good opportunity at that point too to kind of see well, you know, other than the returns portal and that whole workflow, you can see how easy it can integrate. I've actually added onto、uh, my、uh, development store just to see、uh, what you know and how it. Gives me the access to the platform and how I'm able to、uh, reskin it through CSS and some basic kind of things. It's interesting and it's really, really well executed. So good work on that. I just wanted to thank you, and number one for that offer. I think that 60 days is fantastic and it's a great starting point for those that are maybe manually doing returns、um, and or are not happy with the return experience. If you're in the mid market to enterprise brand and, and you see,、uh, you know, some of your peers,、uh, you know, the Mac Weldons and Rothies and Draper James of the world that have made the choice to use、uh, the full solution、um, and having people go to these Dropbox locations and things to do these exchanges. Then、uh, I think、uh, talking to the Happy Returns team、um, is certainly should be on your radar. As you know, like Shopify's mission really is to make commerce better for everyone. And、um, you know, based on this recording today, I, I just I feel both you and the Happy Returns team you really are in tight alignment with wanting to help brands just to execute better. Post-purchase customer experience. I mean, I talk about this a lot on this podcast, and even the brands I manage. But just better returns, improving these efficiencies. There's some cost savings. There's the environmental、uh, component to this. I just think this is fantastic, and just want to thank you, you know, for sharing your knowledge and your vision today. And I appreciate you giving back to the Shopify ecosystem. Well, thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. And remember, for me, I have really short nails, so、uh, tape really is a four-letter word. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. All right, have a great day. E-commerce fast lane is brought to you by OmniSend. OmniSend is an email and SMS marketing platform built for nimble Shopify merchants who want to increase their sales and not their workloads. Full Shopify integration, pre-built automation workflows, intuitive segmentation, and no-code editing makes it easy to get up and running without diving into the nitty-gritty details, unless you want to. More than fifty. Thousand e-commerce brands use OmniSend to grow their businesses on autopilot, converting their customers with quick-to-build, highly relevant emails and texts. So visit OmniSend.com, start your 14-day free trial today with no credit card required. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you personally for being a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips. On the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.